What's up everyone, this is Edward from Carbide3D and we're gonna do another uh, Carbide Create Pro walkthrough today. I saw this post in our forum uh, a few days ago. Um, Andrew wanted to know how to make this sort of shape and there have been some really great answers. Um, Will jumped in and Mike actually went through and did a video walkthrough um, where he got pretty close to it, he even added the textures around the outside. Um, and I think Andrew ended up making this based off of uh, Mike's tutorial. So I thought I would go through and do this whole thing, um, but then after we get done designing it, um, we're actually going to cut it out so you can see what that looks like. We'll create the toolpaths while we're at it. So I've got uh, Carbide Create open, and we're going to check the document settings. Uh, when I'm going to use the Pro feature, I like to set the model resolution very high. Uh, that's going to give you the, the best resolution um, to preview uh, what the 3D components actually look like. I'm going to set this stack thickness to 3 quarters of an inch. Hardwood will be used in a double XL uh, with a short retract height. So to start with, we're just going to draw a, a rectangle, a square, and we're going to make it a 5x5 five five square. And we'll keep it an actual square. Now I'm going to offset this. I could just draw another triangle, but or another square, but I'm gonna use the offset tool. I'm gonna to offset it inside a quarter of an inch. And now we have our general shape. So th this is really what we're going for here. We're gonna use this border area. Actually, we should probably Let's set that in a little bit further. Let's do, we'll offset it um, a half of an inch so we have plenty of room for our texture. And I'm gonna move this to where I want it. So it'll be, this is a quarter inch grid, so it'll be a half inch in and half inch up um, from the origin. And now we're gonna use our polyline tool and just basically draw some triangles. Close that, yeah, that didn't close for some reason. I was probably too close to that other node. Now I can duplicate this and then I'm gonna do a vertical flip, grab this node, put it there, and I'm gonna duplicate it again, and then I'm gonna rotate it. And I could drag this around or you can type in the discrete value. So 90 degrees, I can take that node. Now if I copy it, I can do a horizontal flip. And we have our general shape here. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're going to go into the model view now. So I'm just gonna start out by selecting this this triangle and I'm going to go to shape if I would have clicked the button and I'm going to make this uh, a round but I'm going to show you what it looks like you can, you can preview this actually before I make that I'm going to select the outside border and I'm going to create a shape from that this is uh, our base so we're going to set the height equal to our material and we're gonna give it a name, and we're using the add function here. So we're gonna apply, and now you can see we basically just extruded that five inch square up three quarters of an inch. So we can hide that, and now we're gonna select this, this triangle, and we're gonna do shape again, and we're gonna select round. And I'll show you what this looks like with the defaults. So, the default is add, so it's it's rounded out this triangle uh, additionally to the top of this, but we actually want to subtract. I'm just gonna call this T1 and click apply. It's a pretty deep dish. Uh, if we wanted to scale it, we could say, you know what, uh, round that out, but only go a quarter of an inch down. And you can see that it updates right there. So the lowest point of that would be a quarter of an inch uh, below the surface, but I don't think that we need to scale it because our material is uh, thick enough. So 
We'll do that. Done. High 3D. Now we'll select this triangle on the bottom. And the order here actually doesn't matter. Name this one T2. And you can see if we go back to our picture here, we're, we're getting close. You can see that these are triangles. They're all sort of dished out. So we're done. Hi 3D. Now, we can select this one and do the same thing that we've been doing, subtract. Show 3D. So we've got that. And we can select this one and do this one more time. So round, subtract, we'll name it T4 and show 3D. So this looks pretty close already to this, but you can tell in this one that it's actually uh, the center of this isn't the same height as the material. And in ours, the center is. So we need some way to, to relieve this. And you can see these come down at a slope, um, actually like a curve. So to do that, uh, we can select this outside box. And the thing with uh, model view is once we've created the components off of these vectors, we can actually move the vectors and the component is still there. So because we moved this one, now I can select this outside bounding box and we're gonna do another shape. I'm gonna show you this in 3D so you can see what it's doing. So this is the default. It's trying to add a flat an inch high uh, above the top of this material. But what we actually want to do is we want to round it out and we want to subtract it. So if we do this, because the shape is so big, that round actually cuts all the way down through the material, uh, which we don't want. So here we can use the scale height and we can say, okay, the max, this is really depth, right? Like the max depth we want to go is a half an inch and it'll flatten, it'll flatten that out. Uh, we could even go less than that. We wanted to go, let's say a quarter of an inch. This is what it would look like. And this would be a little more gradual. So it's still pretty exaggerated, these, these ridges are. I actually think that we were better off here. Uh, maybe we'll try to split the difference, like 3 eighths of an inch. See what this looks like. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and hide this and done. And you'll notice in the reference picture there's a texture around the edge. So I'm going to load up a texture, uh, but I want to isolate it only in this area. So I'm going to select the outside border and this border, and our texture is only going to fill in in between those. So we've got those selected. We can go to uh, the texture button and in my downloads I've got one called mortar which looks like uh, pebbles. So I'm going to apply that and it's important that you stay in um, the create component view here because we can still tweak a bunch of uh, all, all the parameters. So I'll show you what this looks like by default after we apply it go to show 3D and it's that's super aggressive. Uh, but what we can do is we can shrink those pebbles down. Uh, we'll change the scale. And we're going to change the height to 063. And I actually want to subtract it. We'll see what this looks like. And this is a nice view with the 3D preview. You can, you can play around with all these components and really see what they look like. I think I actually want to invert this 
and we'll see what that looks like. So that's going to flip all the highs to the lows and the lows to the high. And looks okay. It's pretty rough. Maybe we should grow this texture back a little bit. 25%. There we go. That looks uh, a lot like this texture. Not identical, but uh, it's pretty close. So we'll name this texture. And it is nice to give all of your components a name. So when you see them in the component list, um, you know which one you're editing and, and clicking on. So I'm going to go done. And we've got all the components made now. So we can hide this and go into toolpath. And the 3D toolpaths are super easy to make. Um, think of Think of the borders like a bounding box, like you're containing the toolpath to this area. So I want to start uh, cutting that texture pattern with a smaller cutter that I'm going to want to cut this with. So we're going to do select here and here. And we're going to do 3D finish. And I want to use this 101. Uh, that is an eighth inch ball end mill. Um, these feeds are really slow, actually. I'm going to change these to uh, 40 and 40. And our step, that's a pretty fine step over. So the smaller this number, the more detail you're going to get. Um, but it's a trade-off because it's going to take longer to cut the cut that tool path. So let's call this one texture. And we can simulate it here to see if we're going to get enough detail. Let's see. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Hide that simulation. Now we're going to select this interior square. And we're going to do 3D finish again. We could we could use the same the same tool. Um, We could use the same one, and I'll show you uh, the difference here. So that's going to take 22 minutes um, to do this interior 3D finish. And we'll see in the simulator what it'll actually look like. So that looks pretty good. Uh, but I think if we went ahead and used a larger cutter, Let's say the, the 201, and this is actually a square end mill. Uh, this isn't, um, let's see, we're going to change this step over to 50 thou. And let's see what this looks like. So that's only going to take six minutes. Um, again, this is, this is all a trade-off between time and quality. So the smaller cutter you use and the smaller step over you have, the better your detail is going to be but the longer it's gonna take. Okay, so this looks a little jagged to me. Um, I don't know if we'd be super happy with the way that that would turn out. So I think I'm gonna go back in and we'll change this step over to 30 thou. Leave our feeds and speeds the same, but I wanna change this angle to 45 and see if that makes a difference with the way it looks for the finish. So we're up to 10 minutes here. Let's see what this looks in the simulation. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I think combination of a, a finer step over and running it at a different angle uh, might have helped us out there, but this looks pretty smooth um, for what it is. And the reason I don't really mind doing a tool change to do this um, is because with a three quarter inch thick of material, three quarter inch thick piece of material, you could use an eighth inch cutter uh, to get through it, but it would take a long time. And we had a ball nose cutter in, which means you'd actually have to cut a little bit deeper than the material to, to get all the way through it up to the edges. Uh, so I would have wanted to use a 201 around the outside anyway. So I'm gonna select this outside profile, go to contour. This is a traditional toolpath. 
we have 201 selected because that was the last tool we used for over here. And I'm gonna do use stock bottom, three quarters of an inch. I'm gonna go thou over and I'm gonna select the outside. So this is gonna keep the cutter outside of our profile and that'll maintain our outside dimensions. So this is a profile cut and I'm gonna add some tabs in here to keep it in place. Four of them should do. They can be uh, eighth of an inch wide and an eighth of an inch thick. And I'm gonna change this plunge to 30. Our depth is 092. That's okay. And now let's see what this looks like in the simulator. All right, that looks pretty good. I mean, it looks a lot like this. And it's gonna take us about 35 minutes, 33 minutes uh, to finish that off. Uh, one thing that I like to do before I, before I save the G code and save the file is just remember where the origin, so this is uh, lower left of the material. So I know that if I get a piece of material that's at least you know, this wide and at least this tall. Um, and I started in the bottom left, my part will fit in that material. And we have this, I could set to 12 by six and a half. So I need something that's about six and a half by uh, six and a half would be the minimum piece that I need. And your origin is set in the job setup. Toolpath zero, lower left, and that's what this red and white circle represents. So I'm gonna save this G code and we'll see you over at the machine.